Ss. And before we begin today, I would just ask the court reporter to swear in the witnesses. And I believe that will be Mr. Mazuko and Mr. Simpkins. Um, Allison and Anna Wheeland, I don't know if you plan on testifying, but just in case I have questions for you, I'm going to have you sworn in as well. All right, oh, and I so, have yes. And I have Mr. Uh, uh, from the, the dialogue just previous, I have Mr. Mizuko and uh, Mr. Simpkins being sworn. Is that it? Um, also, Alice and Anna Wheeland. OK, all, all right, four individuals. What I will do is I'm going to read my little script and then I'll ask you each individually to confirm. But first, are, is there any uh, counsel present? Any uh, any lawyers except for the hearing officer, of course. No, no. OK, that'll make my script a little shorter. Um, it's very simple. Uh, how about this? I'll just ask each individual. Mr. Simpkins, do you understand that you are testifying under the penalties of perjury? I do. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Timothy Simpkins, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y-S-I-M-P-K-I-N-S. -I Thank you. And Mr. Mizuko, do you understand that you are testifying under the penalties of perjury today? I do. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Michael Mizuko, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. M A Z Z U C C O. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Alice Weiland, do you understand that you are testifying under the penalties of perjury in this hearing today? I do. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Alice Weiland, A L I C E W I E L A N D. Thank you and apologies for mispronouncing your name. And then okay. Ms. Anna Wheeland, do you understand that you are testifying under the penalties of perjury in this hearing today? Yes, I do. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Anna Wheeland, A-N-N-A-W-I-E-L-A-N-D. Thank you very much. I believe I have completed my task. You were on mute, hearing officer. I apologize for that. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. So before we go any further, I just have a few exhibits center on behalf of the department. Exhibit one is the order from the town of Sherman dated March 29th, 2022. Exhibit two is the appeal filed by Mr. Mizuko, dated April 6, 2022. And exhibit three is the notice of hearing, dated August 22nd, 2023. And that's exhibit three. Okay, those are the only exhibits I have on behalf of the department. Uh, Mr. Mizuko, I have your exhibits entered into the record exhibits one through nine. Mr. Simpkins, I ha also have exhibits filed by you, um, but they weren't numbered. So as you, I believe there's a lot of overlap with Mr. Mizuko's exhibits. So um, I think probably the easiest way to do this is if you need to refer to an exhibit um, that Mr. Mizuko and yourself both filed refer to the exhibit number that Mr. Mizuko is using so we don't have overlap. If there's an exhibit that you have that Mr. Mizuko did not file, please reference it and then we can mark it, identify it and mark it at that time. Understood. Thank you. OK, I just have a. A couple of preliminary questions for Mr. Mizuko. Uh, Mr. Mizuko. 
do you have I, I know I understand you're not the property owner in this case you're the the engineer for um, Alice and Anna Wheeland um, do you have an agency agreement with uh, Alice and Anna Wheeland uh, an agency agreement well and, and, and some sort of agreement doesn't have to be necessarily labeled agency agreement but any type of agreement that would show me that you have authority to act on behalf of alice and anna wheeland uh, only that i you know went under contract to provide a civil engineering services for them okay Um, we have a retainer agreement. Does that does that help? I'll accept Mr. Mizuko's testimony that he's under contract to provide engineering services for you. Thank you. And one more question for you, Mr. Mizuko, at this time. Um, I know the the written appeal is dated April 6th, 2022. Can you just let tell me uh, when you called in, if and when you called in the appeal? I called in the appeal. On 3.31.22 at 3.48 p.m. Thank you. OK, so that, those are just the two preliminary questions I had for you. So uh, as you as you may or may not know, the appellant in this case, uh, Mr. Mizuko, uh, um, Anna and Alice Wheeland, you are the appellants in this case, so you have the burden of proof. So I will let you proceed first with your case. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. So I don't know if you want qualification listings. Is that typically I've never done one of these hearings, so I apologize. So That's I OK. You... That's OK. Um, so typically, if if you're going to um, testify as an expert, then you would give your qualifications. I don't, it's up to you to decide how you want to testify today. OK, well, I'm just I think it's appropriate to, to list them. I'm um, a licensed septic installer in the state of Connecticut. My license number is 2832. I have an associate's degree in civil engineering from Norwalk State Technical College and a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Graduated in 86. My professional engineering license number is 16169. And over my years of experience in this field, I've installed or engineered and or in engineered approximately 1000 septic systems. So this particular property was an approved lot in a subdivision in 1954. And unfortunately, back then, the site development standards and engineering that went into a subdivision was not as robust as you would find today. The state health code and technical standards were enacted and effective in August of 1982. And the Sherman, the town of Sherman adopted their own health code in September of 1997. And so one of the questions that I had was to Mr. Simpkins, were there, were, is he aware of any analysis that was used to determine the setback distances set forth in the Sherman Health Code? So, so Mr. Mazuko, are you an attorney? Uh, no, I'm an engineer. All right, so, you know, we're, we're getting into a little bit of a, a sticky situation because um, you're not the property owner, so technically you're not representing yourself. You're representing Alice and Anna Wheeland. So since you're not an attorney and you're not representing yourself, you're not permitted to question Mr. Simpkins. OK. Um, now, I, I don't. 
I, I think you need to consider this carefully, and, and so does Alice and Anna Whelan. Um, I, it, it appears from your reaction you weren't aware of that um, and, and from your questioning. Uh, so did you, I'll offer you the opportunity, and Alice and Anna Whelan, did you want to retain counsel for this hearing? Um, so uh, I did speak to counsel about um, whether we should retain uh, him for this meeting, and he said it was pretty straightforward. I'm prepared to ask the questions and um, point to the precedent in this case, which I also sent in, but I don't know if it was um, marked as an exhibit, but I had sent it in. So um, there is a precedent in this case in the, and I'm not an attorney, I'm a CPA, but I can represent myself. Um, so if it's, if we have to, you know, come back, it took us a year and a half to have this hearing. So I would prefer to, um, move it forward today. The attorney I spoke to said that the laws are pretty clear, um, in this case for what we're trying to do. So I can do the speaking and the asking of questions. I know, um, I know what the issues are. Okay, I I am perfectly fine with that. Uh, okay. I I consider yourself representing yourself pro se, so given that you you may question Mr. Simpkins, um, you also may question Mr. Mizuko if you want to get additional uh, information from your engineer into the record. That's fine. And Mr. Mizuko, you are perfectly fine in testifying as to any information you have in this matter. You just okay. can't question Mr. Simpson. Okay, that's fine. I, okay. If I had known that, I would have not even went there, but thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. Here. You're welcome. So I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Mizuko and Miss um, Wheeland, um, how you want to proceed at this point. Who wants to go next? Uh, sure, I will. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, Mike, did you have anything else to add? Well, I can go through some of the, the points and the highlights that were, you know, were, were aggrieved with and okay. but then, Thank then you. you can maybe take over. Okay. Thank so, you. The big issue here is that, as I mentioned, the Sherman, Sherman Health Code was adopted in 1997 and by virtue of their regulations, specifically with section six, there were setback distances that preclu precluded a lot of lots from ever being developed. And that's where the hardship here is. There were no or very little provisions in that code for uh, existing pre existing lots. In the case of the state health code, there was a provision for existing pre existing lots. Whereas in the case of a setback distance of 50 feet, which is the state health code to a water course that said for pre-existing lots that could be reduced down to 25 feet. Now, the Sherman Health Code makes several different distances, separation distances to particular water bodies. One of them being, this is a waterfront lot on Candlewood Lake and that setback distance is 200 feet. Now, we feel it's a little inconsistent and excessive compared with the state code of 50 feet to a water course and 100 feet to a public water supply reservoir. And it's also slightly contradictory, especially when it compares to the 75 foot separation distance to a, a well. So Mr. Mr. Mizuko, so yes. in reference to, to the public health code, your exhibit eight, what page is that on specifically that you think is contradictory? So if you look at uh, the state health code is page 15 and it's item C, open water course. And it says for lots in existence prior to 8-16-82, there that are not on a public water supply watershed, the distance shall be reduced to not less than 25 feet. Okay. As, okay. as you go through your testimony, just um, let me know what pages of the public health code or other document you're referring to, just so okay. I, I can follow along. Thank you. 
All right. And then just in, along those lines on the section six of the Sherman Health Code, that's on page four of seven. So the other thing that's a little bit contradictory too is that there is no separation distance in the state health code from a septic system to a wetland. So if you look on that same table that I just referenced, which is table one, there is nothing listing on, under items as a wetland. And that's again on page 15, just for the record. Yeah, it's, uh, it continues on page 16 too. Now, with respect to the water course, you could propose piping it. And then if it's a tight joint pipe, you could go five feet from a septic system. However, with regard to a wetland, we, there's nothing we can do to the wetland to make any kind of uh, coming compliance with their setback distance. I mean, yeah, I guess you could fill the wetlands, but you know, certain things we just probably wouldn't want to take before the wetlands commission and propose just to get this approved. We just feel it was a, an overreach on, on the part of the Sherman the Sherman Health Code to really preclude a lot of development, in my opinion. And so, again, the wetland setback is is the main issue here, and it's just unfortunate that there really was no provision for that to say even if you had a pre-existing lot where you could then, you know, say abide by the state health code. And many many properties in Sherman uh, around water bodies, wetlands were or precluded from ever being developed. And so it just it's, it's somewhat unfair for property owners that have properties that found themselves at, at 1997 that they, they couldn't all of a sudden build on their property. And so that's that's the gist of the, the appeal here. But Alice may want to weigh in some more on, on some other things. And and she's gonna she's gonna talk about the the other of the, the appeal when I talk about overreach which was the repeal of the 20% limitation that the town of Sherman had with regard to the placement of septic systems on slopes that were exceeding 20%. And oh. that, that I think was submitted as an exhibit. I don't know that it was numbered though. Yes, I, I believe it was submitted as an exhibit and we just check my I could I could give you the name of the document if you if that helps. No, I, I have it. Thank you, Miss Whelan. Um, okay. So I'll enter it as a department exhibit. This will be ex department exhibit four, and it's a memorandum of decision in the matter of Victoria Schneider versus Sherman Health Department, docket number zero nine zero nine zero two SS dated August 13th, 2010. Okay, Ms. Wheeland, I'll, I'll hear from you now. Uh, sure, okay, so I, since um, I would like to ask the question that uh, Mike uh, was gonna ask to uh, Mr. Simpkins. Uh, Mr. Simpkins, do you know of any analysis that was conducted by the town of Sherman um, when they established their setbacks? I do not. I wasn't involved in the authoring of the code. It was done before I actually was employed by the town. So the answer is no, I do not know. Um, and and I, I don't believe there was. OK, so they um, so I just for clarification, it was I don't want to say arbitrary, um, but it was 
sort of a 200 feet, 100 feet sounds good. A little bit arbitrarily made. Well, I think the attitude was is the further the system from the lake, the more protection it would offer. But that's an assumption again, because I wasn't involved in the authoring of the code. And and just for clarification, there's no um, formal analysis that you know of that was done to establish the numbers that would give some precedent for them uh, varying from the state health code, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, I think that was the question uh, Mike was going to ask. Um, so I'll I'll rest my case right now, except that there has been a precedent in this case that. Um, the exhibit you just um, cited that says a um, town um, code cannot be more restrictive than the state code in these matters. Thank you, Ms. Whelan. So let me let me just I want to clarify for the record the actual section of the Sherman Sanitary Health Code that we're talking about is exhibit nine is that section 6.02 that's six, that's the, that's the main one oh, i'm sorry can i answer that yes, yes. you may okay 6.02 specifically talks about other bodies of water and wetlands whereas 6.01 talks about specific named water bodies and and streams or whatever but the one that specifically talks about the wetland is 6.02 and let me just read it so it says 6.02 other bodies of water and wetlands no portion of any subsurface sewage disposal system shall be located within 100 feet of the top of the bank of any brook stream or water course within a defined channel except as noted in 6.01 or within 50 feet of any wetland as defined by the inland wetlands and watercourses regulations of the town of Sherman. In the case of a previously approved lot where the 100 foot setback cannot be met, a setback of not less than 75 horizontal feet will be allowed provided that the system shall be designed and certified by a professional engineer licensed by the state of Connecticut. So in that, it does make a slight provision for a pre-existing lot, but only with regard to the separation distance to a water course and not a wetland. And again, I pointed out earlier that there is no minimum setback in the state health code from a septic system to a wetland. Okay, and is it, do the parties agree that this is a previously approved lot? Mr. Simpkins, do you agree? You know, it's really not a function of my job. It would be the zoning enforcement officer that would render an opinion on that. But I did look at uh, a correspondence from Mr. Mizuko, and he did do his research, and they've indicated that it is a building lot. Okay, so is a, a quote-unquote building lot the same as what the Sherman Health Code refers to as an approved lot? Yes, that's true. OK, thank you. So Mr. Mizuko, do you claim that any other sections of I know you mentioned 6.01 and 6.02, do you claim that there are any other with respect to this particular property, um, that there are any other sections within the Sherman Sanitary Health Code that conflict with the public health code, the state public health code? Not with regard to this lot. Uh, there, there are some other things in there in the Sherman Health Code that go 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 not against, but they're more strict than the state health code. But it doesn't apply to this lot, right? Because we're talking about. So, Mr. Simpkins, in his denial, specifically referenced six point oh two, correct? Well, it would be. Um, if I may, yes, that's correct. OK, so Mr. Simpkins, the the basis of your denial of the, the septic plan was that 
uh, it violated or did not conform with section section 6.02 of the Sherman Health Code. Is that correct? That is correct. OK, thank you. And Mr. Mazuko, you're claiming that section 6.02 of the Sherman Health Code conflicts with the state public health code, specifically um, what you referenced on page 15, table one, C, the open water course provision. Is that correct? That's correct, as does section 6.01, that conflicts as well. But the, the basis for the denial of the Co correct plan was 6.02, not 6.01. Correct. So what's that issue here? As I understand it is section 6.02. Right. Right, it's because fine. we have on our lot, we have a water course and wetlands, so we have both both scenarios. If I may, it would also involve 6.01 because the proposed system is closer than 200 feet to Candlewood Lake. So it, yeah, that, it, go ahead, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim, <clears throat> but there is a provision under that section that if it is designed by a professional engineer, it can go down to 75. You're right. You're right. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, so that technically wouldn't, we, we would get by with that, but. Agreed. So you both agree that the only section here that's at issue is 6.02? Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Simpkins, with respect to section 6.02, is that section related to public health? No, I think it's more related to environmental quality because it's been proven that a sewage disposal system will renovate water free of bacteria within 25 feet of the system. So it's really not a public health issue. It's it's more of a environmental issue. Uh, the further the impact from the lake, the philosophy would be the better for the lake. So it relates more towards um, the reduction of water pollution. Is that accurate? Correct. OK. May I okay. add something? You may, Ms. Wheeland. Oh, um, however, uh, there aren't any studies on um, what that distance has to be to actually have an impact or reduce the impact on the lake. So yeah, just wanted to add that. Is that correct? We no, that, that that's we fine. So so what you're saying is although Mr. Simpkins testified that the the code is in place to reduce the pos possibility of water pollution, there's no evidence that that right. would actually reduce that the code would assist in reducing water pollution. Correct. Mr. Simpkins, can you address that? I, I don't know of any particular studies that say 100 feet is better than 50 feet or 200 feet is better than 100 feet. It's really just common sense that the further away the activity is from a water body, the less potential for water pollution, as you put it, or impact to the water body the biology the chemistry so no i don't know of any studies that would specifically say that 100 feet is better than 50. feet. okay so in in your example um there's no evidence in this particular case that having the septic system closer to the um, water would have any effect on the water. Is that accurate? I, I believe it is, uh, and, and primarily because the public health code is there to protect water pollution and public health, and 
they have a 50 foot setback from a water body and they'll allow you to go down to 25 feet in a previously approved lot. Uh, I mean, the real impact here is going to occur when they construct the property to the to the wetlands and to the water course. You know, that's when the impact will be. Uh, well, for, for clarification, so not, you're talking about site disturbance and things like that, not not specifically with regard to the septic system. Yes, so, I, okay. that, that's, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, so, but maybe I wasn't clear in my question. I, I don't, after hearing myself, I don't think I was. So the, the state public health code in this particular instance would allow that septic system to go as close as 25 feet to the body of water. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And there is okay. no setback from a wetland to a sewage disposal system in the public health code. Right. So the Sherman Health Code requires, and I want to get this right, I believe it's um, 75 feet to the body of water. Is that accurate? Yes. If it's a previously approved lot and it's designed by a Connecticut licensed engineer. Okay. But we there's no evidence here that whether it be 75 feet or 25 feet, that the water would become polluted. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. All right. I don't have any further questions. Um, is there anything, Mr. Simpkins, I know I didn't allow you yet to, to uh, testify other than answering questions. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, if I may, you can let Mrs. Whelan go ask her question if you'd like first. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Whelan, you, you still have your hand raised. I don't know if that's intentional. Sorry, it is. I actually wanted to correct you. You said that there was no evidence that 75 feet or 25 feet would have any difference, but there is evidence that 25 feet would not have an impact. That's why the state set their code the way they did. Um, I think that's what Mr. Simpkins said, that um, for state health, they had allowed it down to 25 feet because at 25 feet, there wouldn't be an impact. Um, so I just wanted to clarify what you said, because you said that 75 feet or 25 feet didn't matter, but there was evidence, again, that 25 feet was sufficient to prevent any pollution. Un understood, but the other than the, the fact that it's in the state health code, is there any evidence beyond that that would show that if you had it 15 feet to the to the to the body of water that the body of water would be polluted correct uh, yeah i guess i guess you're correct yes correct okay. I, I don't know of any evidence yeah right okay mr and if i could just make one statement regarding that issue the code the public health code does say 50 feet they'll yes. let you go down to 25 feet in a previously approved lot because they don't want to penalize people that have previously approved lots. Uh, just wanted to say that for the record. Correct. And and we and Mr. Mizuko and, and Mr. Simpkins, you both testified earlier that you agree that this is a previously approved lot. Yes, that's correct. OK, but again, I'm not the authority from the town's perspective on that. Correct. I understood. Understood. I can speak to that because I got the um, I got the minutes when it was approved and I verified with Ron Cooper. I don't know. He's he's the building guy in the town that it is a previously approved lot and when it was approved. So I had gotten that background information so I can testify to that. OK, and when was it approved? Um, I, I believe it was in the 50s, 1958 or something. 54, I believe, was the letter. Okay, okay, okay. So yes, Mr. Mizuko testified earlier that it was 1954. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Any other um comments, Ms. Wheeland? Or questions? You just have to say it audibly for the record. Oh, sorry. No, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Simpkins, I'll allow you to proceed at this point. 
OK, uh, and very briefly, Mike submitted the plan on March 29th. I reviewed it that same day, denied it. You know, Mike and I had, had a number of conversations about this. Is there any relief for the applicant or the property owner in this respect? And the Sherman Code doesn't allow that. Uh, so Mr. Mizuko appealed my denial of the plan. Uh, the only thing I want to say with regards to the Sherman Code and that previously appeal denial of a plan back in 2007 was the hearing officer felt that the slope requirement specifically was inconsistent with the public health code and that's why they upheld or they they vacated my denial of that plan uh they felt it was inconsistent and if you read that i think that'll become clearly evident and it was my understanding that a town or a municipality has the ability to be more restrictive than the state code as long as it's not inconsistent. So that's really what I wanted to say about that, the Sherman Code specifically. Also, there were two documents that we submitted, one a letter from an engineer and one a petition from the surrounding property owners, just for the record. OK, and did you want to um, explain those letters or how they apply to this particular matter? Just the engine, the opinion from the engineer and he's a professional engineer. He, he looked at Mike's plan. He looked at my denial and he just basically said, you know, the plan was denied because of Section 6.02 of the Sherman Code. That in a nutshell, and he felt that the larger the separating distance, the better. It was from a Mr. Stephen Trinkus. OK, I'm just looking for that now. I know I saw it earlier. I just want to find it. I just wanted to state for the record that we did receive those much after the fact uh, and just recently from the residents on that petition and then a neighboring property owner who hired Mr. Trinkus to write that letter. OK, I see that letter dated August 16th, 2023. Okay. I'm going to mark that as local health exhibit one. Okay, and uh, Mr. Simpkins, you had referenced another exhibit. Which one was that? It was a petition by the surrounding area residents. I believe it was sent up at the same time, that letter from Mr. Trinkus. It's just got signatures from the some of the surrounding property owners that they don't want to see the property developed. Yeah, it's dated August 11th of 2023. Hmm. It's actually addressed to the Connecticut Department of Public Health. And it's from the concerned neighbors of Candlewood Lake Estates. You know, and there's probably 35 signatures. Bear with me, I'm just looking for that. If you can't locate it, we can resend it. Well, let me, uh, please do that because I can't locate it. Um, but let me ask you, would that have any bearing on whether or not the lot is, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the septic plan is approved by your office? Not at all. I mean, okay. the code's the code, and I review the plan based on the content of the Public Health Code and the Sherman Code. Uh, so no, uh, you know, residents could submit that and I, I would deny it based on the code. Okay, thank you. 
Do you have anything? But I will resend it. I okay, will thank you. It. I appreciate that. And uh, Mr. Mazuko, did you get a copy of that? I I did. I I okay. had both. I have both those. Okay. I I suspect I just failed to print it out. So, um, if you could resend that, I would appreciate it. Will do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Simpkins, do you have anything further to add? I do not. Okay, Mr. Mazuko, do you have anything further to add? Uh, just with regard to the last two exhibits from the local health, the letter from uh, Steve Trinkus, uh, he, he notes the, the separation distances. However, he doesn't mention that those both can be reduced down to 75 feet if if it was designed by PE for a pre-existing lot. It does note that in the in the petition, they have it. I, they have to say that it's 75 feet, which it would be correct for an engineered plan. So there's a little bit of inconsistency on on Steve Trinkus's. So you to. you ref you just referenced a petition. What petition are you referring? That to? was the one you couldn't find. Oh, okay. Yeah, just in in the in the there's a little narrative before all the signatures, and it just talks about the separation distances, and they they note 75 feet, which is which is correct for an engineered plan for a pre-existing lot. And then the only other thing I think would be important to point out is that, and, and Tim can speak on this, but I believe that the plan does currently meet the state health code and would be approved in, uh, if it was under the, under the, uh, the regulations of the state health code by itself. Ms. Whelan, I'll get to you in a, in a moment. Um, Mr. Simpkins, I'll, I'll ask that question. Um, would you agree that the plan that Mr. Mazuko submitted for approval or review, I should say, um, complies with the state public health code? Yes, it does. OK, thank you. Ms. Whelan, did you have something to add? Yes, it was in regards to the last two exhibits from the neighbor. Um, I, The neighbor that organized it is the one who lives right next to the property who has offered to purchase the property from me for several times to which I've said no. Um, and so they have a vested interest in me not building the property. And I don't know if, but I would move to, I don't know if I'm allowed to move to, since that evidence has no bearing on the matter, can I, I'm not an attorney, can we move to disallow that evidence to be considered a petition that's not related to, you know, the codes that we're trying to determine if it's approved on? Well, I'm, I'm going to keep it as an exhibit. Um, but understand this is an administrative proceeding, so I'm allowed to give any evidence the weight it's due. So I may find that it's not due any weight. I may find that it's due um, some weight. I okay. I haven't determined that yet, so I'll okay. take your concerns into consideration. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, uh, I'll go around again. Mr. Mazuko, did you have anything further to add? Not at this time, no. Thank you. Ms. Wheeland? Uh, no, thank you for your time. OK, Mr. Simpkins? No, no, thank you. OK, at this point, um, I thank everyone for attending today and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. everyone. Thank have, you. Have, a, have a good day. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Lorraine. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. I'll try, no promises. <laughs>